In this module, we will look at the investors. Who are they? What do they want? In the previous model, we've really looked at the overall cycle and we just assumed that there is an investor, but now it's time to look more carefully at who these investors are and pay attention to the fact that they're actually quite different one from another. So there's enormous variety of investors and understanding that is a key step for entrepreneurs to successfully find the right ones um, and get their funding. At the end of the module, you're going to use this understanding of how investors differ one from another by going through an exercise that looks at a given company but examines how different investors would have different preferences, different thoughts, different ways of approaching these companies. So the tools we're going to give you in this module is understanding why investors are different one from another and how that matters for the entrepreneur. In order to sort of understand the landscape of investors, we're going to put them into, broadly speaking, five buckets. The first one is actually not really a bucket because it's the founders themselves. The second one, we call them family and friends. The third one are angel investors. The fourth one is crowdfunding, and we'll explain what that means. And finally, there's a large set of professional investors that we're going to look at in the fifth bucket. Let's begin with the first bucket. It's a bit of a cheat because it's not an investor. It's founders funding their own companies. Sometimes that's called bootstrapping. What it means is that the founder is either using personal savings or some kind of personal credit to fund the operations of the business. Founders typically do this in the very early stages of the company and typically this is meant to trans transition them into getting money from all the other buckets, from all the other categories that we're going to be looking at thereafter. Now, the first external money typically often comes from family and friends. And if you insist, it's actually called family, friends and fools. Most of them, they give you the money because they love you, they think you're great, and they're not terribly critical of the business. So it's really money that's given on the basis of a relationship but as a founder, you should be aware of some of the strings that may be attached with it. The third bucket is angel investors. Now, don't get too excited. We're not going to have anything flapping across the screen here. Um, angel investors are private individuals who fund startups. The term actually comes out of Hollywood because angel investors was the term used for those who financed films where nobody else wanted to finance. Angel investors, the best way to think about them is wealthy individuals who can fund a company, but individuals that don't have a prior social or family relationship to the founders. And that's why they're different from the initial category of family and friends, because these are basically people that the entrepreneur has to go and find and ask them for their money, their private money. Importantly, angel investors invest their own money. The fourth bucket is crowdfunding. Now, this is a confusing world, and just to be clear about it, Crowdfunding is not really an investor, but it's a method of connecting entrepreneurs to a set of investors. Oftentimes, these other investors are actually angels, or they could even be family and friends or other investor types. But what's unique about crowdfunding is that there is an intermediary, a platform that helps entrepreneurs connect with investors. In the world of crowdfunding, there are four broad types. There are crowdfunding platforms that basically work with donations or simple rewards. There is lending, so debt-based crowdfunding. There is equity crowdfunding. And the latest innovation is tokens or coins. So this is in the world of crypto financing and it's called initial coin offerings or security token offerings. The final fifth bucket is a very large bucket. It is all the professional investors, that is to say organizations who have funding that can be deployed into startups. The big elephant in the room is going to be venture capital. Venture capitalists are professional investors who have funds. They receive money from institutional investors, things that we're going to explain in a later module in greater detail. Venture capitalists then have a job of investing in these companies and taking them to success. In addition to venture capital, there are a number of other financial investors. They could be hedge funds, they could be banks, they could be other types of financial vehicles. 
And in the professional investor category, you also have corporations. So it turns out companies like Intel or Bertelsmann actually make venture capital investments, but they are corporations. Now, one more thing about the professional investors, they tend to come slightly later in the investment cycles. So family and friends, angels and crowdfunding tend to come very early in the investment cycle. And most of the professional investors come slightly later but they typically also have a lot more money to invest. So the goal of this module is really to understand this landscape of investors, to understand how they're different. What I'd like you to keep in mind is thinking through what kind of investors are better suited for what kind of companies. There's essentially a matching process that some ventures could really be well financed by, say, family and friends, Others really need professional investors. Some ventures really work well with crowdfunding, others don't. So we're going to start honing in on what this matching between startups and investors looks like in this module. If you would like to review any of the concepts from this video, please click this button.